Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about FAST scan. FAST stands for Focused Assessment with Sonography in Trauma. We will compare the normal images with the abnormal ones. Starting with the pericardium. The first image shows a normal pericardium. Notice how the heart is encased within a thin, smooth and echogenic line, which is the pericardium. In this image, the pericardial space is free from any excess fluid accumulation and the heart has a normal range of motion. The left lobe of the liver is used as a window to scan the heart. The right ventricle is seen first. And this is the left ventricle. The second image is of pericardial effusion. There is some anechoic fluid within the pericardial space. The maximal depth of the fluid collection can be measured to determine the severity of pericardial effusion. A small pericardial effusion is less than 1 cm in maximal depth. In this case of pericardial effusion, the amount of fluid is more. A moderate pericardial effusion has a maximal depth of fluid between 1 to 2 centimeters and a large pericardial effusion has a maximal depth of more than 2 centimeters. Here is another image of a pericardial effusion. We can see a significant amount of anechoic fluid surrounding the heart. Now we move down to the right upper quadrant to scan the space between the liver and the right kidney, which is called the Morrison's pouch or the hepatorenal space. Normally, no anechoic free fluid will be seen between the liver and kidney in this longitudinal view. And here is an image of abdominal pelvic fluid in a patient with trauma. We can see anechoic free fluid in the Morrison's pouch during this fast scan. We can also examine the subphrenic and pleural spaces to look for any free fluid in these areas. Here we have another image of abdominal pelvic fluid. We can see a significant amount of anechoic free fluid between the liver and right kidney. Another important location to scan is the right paracolic gutter. This space is below the inferior pole of the right kidney and the inferior margin of the liver. Free fluid may be found in this location in some cases. In the normal case, no free fluid is found. We do not see any anechoic fluid here. And over here in this image, there is anechoic free fluid in the paracolic gutter space. These are the bowels. This is another location where fluid can be found without fluid being seen in the Morrison's pouch. Now we go over to the left upper quadrant to scan the left pleural space, subphrenic space and the splenorenal space. In the normal image, no fluid is seen below the diaphragm, within the pleural space and between the spleen and left kidney. Whereas in this image, we see free fluid in the subphrenic space. Anechoic fluid is seen between the diaphragm and the spleen. In this image, we can see anechoic fluid between the spleen and left kidney. 
The pelvic region is usually scanned in a transverse view to check for free fluid. This is a normal image of a female patient. This anechoic fluid filled structure is the bladder. This is the vagina. And down here is the rectum. The space between the uterus or the vagina and the rectum is known as the pouch of Douglas or rectovaginal or rectouterine pouch. Free fluid is usually found at this location. In this image, we can see a significant amount of free fluid in the pouch of Douglas. It will be seen behind the uterus. There is an anechoic fluid collection with some complexity in a trauma patient. You can also examine the pelvic region in longitudinal view. Here we see no fluid behind the uterus. And over here we can see some anechoic fluid in the pouch of Douglas. This is an image of a male patient. In males, fluid will be seen behind the bladder. In the normal image, no fluid is seen at this location. Whereas in a trauma patient, fluid can be found behind the bladder. We can see anechoic fluid with complex areas. Here is another image showing pelvic fluid. Fluid is seen behind the bladder. This area is known as the rectovesico pouch. These images are taken in transverse plane. In the normal image, we can see the prostate and the rectum without any fluid surrounding them. But in this image, we see anechoic fluid posterior to the bladder and the fluid surrounds the prostate. The anterior pleura and lung can be scanned as part of the E-FAST or extended fast exam. We can check the anterior pleura and lung tissue to assess for pneumothorax. These are longitudinal views of the chest showing the ribs and the lung tissue in between. This hyperechoic line is the pleura. In normal cases, we will see lung sliding, which consists of normal lung movements. During respiration, they will be seen in real time. Also, we will find comet tail artifacts. A series of hyperechoic striations are seen. In a case of pneumothorax, there will be absence of lung sliding and no comet tail artifacts will be found. This can be further assessed on M mode. In a normal lung, after M mode is applied, a seashore sign is seen. In the M mode tracing, the upper part is the chest wall. These horizontal lines are seen, and the lower half of the M mode tracing is the lung tissue. It consists of a granular, sandy appearance. This is the lung. And the interface between these horizontal lines and these granular, sandy areas is the pleural line. In a pneumothorax, this seashore sign is replaced by a barcode sign. It is also called a stratosphere sign. The granular sandy areas are all replaced by horizontal lines. This can be seen in a pneumothorax. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.